The biggest competition in Team 10 Pin Bowling has come stateside for the very first time. Hello and welcome to Las Vegas and the Mandalay Bay for Weber Cup 20. Featuring two four-man teams representing the very best from the US and Europe, the Weber Cup is Tempin's answer to golf's Ryder Cup. Here's a reminder of what happened when the sides last met in 2018. It's rolled around again. Here we are, Weber Cup 19. So good job, first blood to Europe. Oh, Barrett's got that ball working. That wraps it up. Well, let's see. Troop can make the adjustment. Oh my goodness, he's got it. But with a huge slice of luck. Can he provide the win here? Yeah. Oh, what he can't do is that. Now that's a mental mistake. But it's been an easy night for Chris Barnes. The Americans have been simply unstoppable. The fans have made their decision. It's gonna be Kyle Troop against Jesper Svensson. What a huge morale booster this could be. This to win the point for Team Europe. And he's nailed it. He's done it. So this is the ball of the match. Oh my goodness. Simonson looks to just close the door on this one and does exactly that. So big. We're here to play this year. This for the match. Oh well, my goodness me. We are gonna have our first roll-off. Well, 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 what a big win that is. And I tell you, Europe are clinging on. No, oh, this is this is just wave the white flag, get me out of here. This man is simply unstoppable right now. The pressure on Dom now must be absolutely immense. Can't believe that. No. It's not his night. No, he's looking to just shut the door, lock it, and throw away the key. And that's it, that's pretty much done. Needs to be good. And it is. We go to a roll off. This for the match. Got it. Brilliant. There it is. They're still alive, still kicking, still fighting. Needs at least nine. And gets them. And he's got oh, the lot. He's, he's got the lot in the jackpot. And it's a point for Team USA. That's it. And he's finished the way he should be finished as well. With a strike. It's Europe dejected. It's America triumphant. A very impressive performance from the USA at last year's event. And if we look back at the role of honour for the Weber Cup, it seems that once a team wins, they go on to dominate for a number of years. The Americans ruled between 2000 and 2002. Europe came back in 2003. Team USA once again claimed the next three years. Then things tightened between 2009 and 2012 with two wins apiece before five years of European domination was finally ended in 2018, with the US narrowing the overall score to 9-10. Matches at the Weber Cup are played over 10 frames, but there are no extra shots in the 10th frame. A strike is worth 30 pins, and the maximum score is the magical 300. A spare is 10 pins plus the pinfall of the first shot in the frame, and actual pinfall after two shots in an open frame, with tied matches settled by a sudden death roll off. The order of play for the opening session sees a series of singles games featuring every player, followed by a fan's choice match where the bowlers are chosen through a public vote. But first up, a chance for the sides to assess their overall form and for the fans to meet the talent on display as all eight players take part in the traditional team Baker match. With no further ado, bringing to you last year's champion, the U.S. team. Give it up.
And now, coming from across the sea, looking for a bit of revenge, Team Europe! Before we start the proceedings, let's get the final thoughts of both captains. All right, Dom. Which of the players are you most scared of on the USA team? You guys had a great year last year. It was very impressive coming back after what we did. Um, I think your best player is Jacob. I think he's, uh, he strikes whenever he wants to, not care in the world. Uh, he's been bowling here in Vegas when we're getting ready to play the Weber Cup and averaging about 275. So I put Jacob as one of the threats. All right, Chris, on my team, who are you most scared of? Mm. I mean, everybody's afraid of the giraffe. Jesper's, uh, <laughs> once he gets it going, you know, there's not very many guys. And, and Oscu, uh, you know, I have lots of memories of watching Oscu uh, throw some big strikes, and you're okay too. All right. Say we get down the captain's picks or the fans' picks and it comes down to it, you and me, who wins? I'm not sure. <laughs> I can say that Jesper's going to match Jacob for strikes. I think uh, Stu's going to match Kyle for his character and, and how charismatic they can be on the lanes. And I'd say that Simonson's going to have his hand full with Oscu, so at least me and you. Hopefully just to sit back and watch and let it happen, maybe. But uh, no, I think yeah, we've had some great matches over the years and I'm sure we have plenty more to come. It could come down to just you and I, but I have a feeling that by the time I would bowl you it towards the end that it might be just for us putting the name on the trophy one more time. But now we're in Vegas. But there's definitely a different dynamic with that now. And atmosphere is going to be different with the crowd. Um, the way that we walk into the arena won't be the same. Just everything's going to be a little bit different for us. But... After a loss last year, I think that's kind of refreshing for us. Losing's refreshing, it's good to know. Yeah. We'll, we'll let you try and get refreshed as often as you'd like. This trophy's where it belongs right now. It's staying home. It's one point per win with 18 the magic number. And your commentators for the opening match are Tim Mack and Jesse May. Let's hear some pins fall. This is the Weather Cup, and I'm thrilled to be joined by a man who knows the Weber Cup history well. He created it. Ten times the USA captain, Tim Mack. Tim, are you excited about this? I mean, it's great to see. This This event's very special and very important to me for over the years. Um, I've, been, I've been basically in every, at every single Weber Cup, and uh, this is great to see it in America for the first time. It's fantastic. How important is this Baker match to kick things off? Everyone's got to play. Well, I think it sets the tone for the event, right? The, the players want to get comfortable uh, early, and uh, they want to get a feel for what the lane is doing. And I, I think uh, the teams usually that have success, the, the team that usually has success in, in, in this Baker match usually does quite well in the Weber Cup. How tough is that spare? I mean, uh, we're talking about eight of the best professionals in the world. Uh, Don Barrett le leading off trying to... Uh, be a captain and lead from the front. And uh, as you see, he leaves a little 310 split there to start the, start the match early, but covers it, covers it quite well. I know all the action is yet to come, but people have been talking about the strength of this USA team. On paper, could this be the best USA team ever assembled? It certainly is. I mean, right now, you, you, you could argue that right now. As you see Kyle Chief start off in the USA, first shot in America with a big strike. Um, you can argue that for sure, Jesse, that this, is, this, this team is really clicking on all cylinders. Jacob Butchef has had an amazing uh, season and has earned his right out here to uh, represent the, the red, white, and blue. As you see, Kyle shot a uh, perfect 10 back. And uh, Simonson and Troop have been, have been really solid uh, in the last 12 to 18 months. This is the youth on the Team Europe, Jasper Svensson. It's, he's, it's very key that he gets off to a good start here, I would say. He's the catalyst. When Jesper bowls well, Europe has a lot of success. And uh, he's coming off of, of a hand injury just recently. He just had, had a, a broken bone in his hand. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how he deals with, uh, you know, the problems that he's had in his hand. He's had a significant amount of time off. But uh, 
That first shot doesn't seem like he's missed, missed a beat. No, that was smooth. So you looked at the oil pattern. Any 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 thoughts about who it's going to suit? How about this man, Simonson? I, I, I think so. Well, I, it's a longer oil pattern, and uh, as you see, you'll see the right-handers migrate towards the middle of the lane, and they'll be they'll be playing a lot deeper in in the middle of the lane. Um, I, I just watched in practice that uh, the, the bowlers got a little bit more comfortable in that 18 to 20 zone, which is uh, you know just between that third and fourth arrow, um, and, and the way they're going to attack the lane. Uh, you see Simonson ball comes up a little weak there, and he leaves a 10-pin, which shouldn't be a problem to pick up. Again, again, the emotions, you know, the players just getting out here, getting their feet wet. This is going to be a long, long uh, four or four days here in Las Vegas. And what you're going to see is um, you're going to see a lot of communication amongst the team members, and that's, and that's what's made Europe so successful for so many years. Their camaraderie and the, and the way they're able to communicate and you know, leave all their ideas all for the better of the team. And uh, this, speaking of team, this guy's been a great, great, great uh, performer in the Weber Cup the last couple of years. I mean, he's the heart and soul of Team Europe, Stu Williams, isn't he? Yeah, the, they call him the British Bolt Beef, beef Stew. <laughs> and how would you characterize Stu's game? He's not happy about that first shot. Yeah, he leaves a 10 pin there. It's actually a, a good quality shot. Um, but Stu is, um, he's, he's, a, he's an incredible field player. He's got one of the best hands on tour. When we say hands, he's able to manipulate his ball reaction quite well. Uh, he's got a really, really good soft hand, and uh, he's got a great demeanor about himself. When Stu gets it going, he's not afraid to let the other team know that, hey, you know, you're in my, you're in my zone, you're in my world, and I'm going to give you the business. Is he taking a new ball already? What he's doing, he's taking a spare ball, and he's going to, it's a ball that creates less friction on the lane. So, He's going he's gonna to go cross lane at this, and it's going to have less change of direction. Most of the players will have spare balls uh, that they'll use for their second shot just to, to cut down the angles and cut down the, the change of direction. So as you have, you see that ball doesn't make a lot of change of direction. It's quite easy. Not a lot of these players are going to miss, miss these single pins. You, you, you're talking about the best of the best out here. Um, but as I said earlier, um, this is a unique environment. It's a unique format, and it, it's just a – this is – you're going to have Jacob Butchev come up right now for the, his first shot ever in the Weber Cup, and it's it, it's certainly uh, it, this is a whole different animal. And here we see the youngster first go. This is his debut. That is not the start he wanted to. No, no, that's a tough spare to make. Um, you know, I was watching him in practice, and he had we call it in bowling he had a lot of early friction, so his ball wanted to read the lane and hook early, and you can see it come high on the head pin leaving the two two four seven eight which is a very difficult spare he's going to try to get the ball to the to the to the left of the the two pin and have the ball t take out that back we call it that sleeper pin in the back uh, this is a very difficult spare especially for your first shot on the, in the weber cup whoa on the outside gets Knock a lucky. Him down. was that a perfect spot no no you got a little lucky there you, 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 you don't want to make that spare on the outside of that. You want to actually have the ball to be to the, to the left, left of the two pin. And as you see it go right of the two pin and four pin comes off the wall and takes out the seven and very fortunate to make that spare. He'll take it, but in this, you know, new modified scoring system to have for the Weber Cup, those uh, missing that many uh, pins on your first ball, that really penalizes yeah, you, doesn't it? Count, we call it count. Uh, count really, 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 really will hurt you, uh, when you when you get a low pin count. As you can see, Oscu coming up high in the head pin. He hasn't been here in the Weber Cup for a couple of years, so I'm sure his adrenaline is racing a little bit. And uh, he misses left, and you can see the ball just picks up friction and goes, we call it Brooklyn in bowling terminology. So he leaves a 6'10", which he'll take a, a ball that doesn't change direction a lot and go cross lane at it pretty hard. I mean, we're seeing a lot of broken first shots early on in this Weber Cup. Is that just players getting adjusted or I think it's you know listen it's it's a little bit of everything right it's adrenaline it's the Weber Cup it's it's the environment and uh, these players just have to get comfortable and uh, they're gonna need they're gonna need some shots on the lanes before they can get feel comfortable and feel confident about what they're going to be doing a strike here would be great for the USA <laughs> and that's the captain great shot from Barnes as you can see bowling in the fourth position it's been a Weber Cup legend for many, many years, and uh, his first shot here on home soil is uh, going to make the fans very, very, very happy and very proud.
Welcome back to the Weber Cup from Las Vegas, where after four frames, the US currently lead Europe 95 to 85 in the opening Team Baker match. Commentary from Jesse May and Tim Mack. Another great shot from Dominic. That's a that was a ball change from Dom from the first frame. So you see the ball, you see, you see the righties start to migrate into the middle of the lane already. They're already pretty deep into the lane, which come later in the session that could put be some issues with how the lane breaks down and what the bowlers have to face transition wise. So it'll be interesting to see how everything turns out shot uh, match to match. Troop with a strike on his first round. Let's see how he goes here. He's a power, power bowler, isn't he? Yeah, two-handed specialist, so, the, 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 so popular two-handed style that we see. Perfect shot from, from Troop. Trying to get the crowd going early. You know, nice to see. I mean, you can't do it any better than those two shots. He did seem, of all the USA players, the most fired up about this event. Big emotion guy, Jesse. He, you know, he wears it right on his sleeve. You always know what he's feeling. And uh, he doesn't hide anything. And I think that's that's what makes him that's what makes him great and successful. But it also also holds him back sometimes. He's got to know when to push that emotion button. So, great great start from Kyle Troop. Did not love his first round. Jesper, let's see. He's made the adjustment. So we've got we've got Jesper with another with a fantastic shot as well. And uh, listen, what what you guys don't know is in the PBA they have a big doubles tournament, the Mark Roth, uh, uh, Marshall Holman doubles and. Kyle Troop and Jesper Svensson bowl together. They bowl together with one another. And now, in this event, again, they're bowling on opposite teams, bowling for their bowling for their countries. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plans out during the during during, during these last next couple of days. Absolutely. France on right. tour, but not in the Weber Cup. And Simonson, he missed wide there, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, Aaron shot from Anthony there, missed 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 to the right. And um, as you can see. It's just way too far right at the break point, and you know it's not. It's just not going to come back there. You got to kind of keep keep the ball left of uh, the five, six, seven board. I know the players from talking to them when they were warming up uh, said, you know, there, there tends to be a little bit of out of bounds to the right. When we say out of bounds, if they miss to the right, the ball doesn't want to, you know, pick up and have traction to come back. Oh, that's a big open. Left an open frame. And that gives Europe pole position here. I think you'll see Stewie, if he's able to capitalize on the open here, if he strikes here, you'll see a little fist pump from Stewie. That's where Anthony was hoping to put his first ball, because that would have been a, a very good first shot. Uh, unfortunately, the ball doesn't pick up enough, and uh, he leaves the eight pin standing. First open frame of the Weber Cup, and let's see if Team Europe can capitalize. Strike here would be strong. Williams game face and the shot perfect shot from Stewart good answer there's, there there's the emotion that I was talking about great response here actually from the Europeans who've made the trip across the pond it's great to see all the fans out here and the support out here that's just a fantastic shot from from the from the big fella beef stew little fist pump early and uh, gives Europe the lead what does USA have to do to get back into this first match? Looks like strikeout, perhaps. Well, they certainly need to put some together. And uh, Jacob makes a good shot here. Leaves a, We call it the shaker 10 pin. The ball just comes in a little bit light. And uh, the pins don't do the damage to mix them up to catch the strike. So certainly Europe early here in, in the Baker are definitely in the driver's seat. I mean, he's one of the top uh, points earners on tour. He's making his debut. He grew up in Las Vegas, but how tough is it? First time on the Weber Cup, the nerves. Is it totally different than anything you've ever bowled before? It, it is It is unlike anything you've ever experienced. The lane, the atmosphere, the environment, the history, the moment, and putting on the red, white, and blue for your country for the first time in this environment, in this arena, is just, uh, it's the unexplainable, Jesse. It's just the heart rate's going and the adrenaline's pushing, so it's a different animal. 22 pins is the lead. Actually, a great shot from Oscu there. Just comes in a little bit high, leaves the four pin. 
Um, shouldn't be a problem on the spare. He'll he'll grab his spare ball and go. As you see, a great look at Oscar. He actually gets in the air uh, on his on his pivot step right before his power step, and you see the ball drive through the pins and leave the four pin. He actually jumps in in the air, so he creates an an, an extreme amount of power. Uh oh, uh, no problem. <laughs> you obviously know Oscar a uh, long time. Uh, how excited was he to return to the Weber Cup team? I think for him, I, yeah, I think I think the this year was great with with the PBA Tour that the, the highest point getter on the USA team and the Europe team earned their right into the Weber Cup, and there was so much talk about it through both camps on the Europe side and the and the American side because everybody wants to bowl this event, and uh, Oscu is extremely pleased to be back bowling for the Europe. Pressure on the captain. He needs to strike here to keep the pressure on. Keep USA's oh, hopes alive in this first match. And he did. Two great shots from the captain, earning his stripes and uh, throwing a great shot there to cut the lead to 11 pins. You know, I just, you can't throw it any better and be more classic style than Chris Barnes, the Hall of Famer, doing the deal, saying, all right, boys. Let's give ourselves a chance here to see if we can get an early 1-0 lead in the Weber Cup. I mean, it feels like such a great mix for Team USA. They've got all the youth with Troop and Simonson and uh, Butters, but that wisdom and experience that Barnes has, it's uh, it, his performance is going to be key to USA's success. And the, cap and, the, and the European captain responds, and yes, you're right, Jesse. He's, he's going he's gonna to have to lead from the front. Chris has got so many tools to his... Uh, advantage that he utilizes you know with his communication and he's, he's one of the smartest bowling minds in the history of our game and as you see dom here on the replay with a, just the absolute perfect answer to chris barnes's answer to, to give europe the lead going into the ninth and tenth frame yeah that was this is almost a must strike shot for kyle to get to have a chance for the for the americans to have a chance to steal this first point troops been perfect so far That's high on the head pin, leaves the 3 6 10. It's going to be a tough spare. Not only that, but only potentially uh, potentially 17 on this frame. Yeah, he just, he just misses a little bit left in the front. You see how hard, because of the power that the two handers put on, you see how hard the ball comes off the spot. It makes the spare no problem, but you see how hard the balls drive off the spot. So the players are going to have to talk amongst one another to make the necessary changes so that they don't make the same mistakes moving forward, obviously. USA hoping now that Jesper Svensson blinks. Really, really Jesper only needs eight, eight pins to win here. Um, the USA have a max 230, and uh, anything eight, eight pins or more on the first shot, and the Europeans will take the first, the first point. Oh, boy. Oh, he got oh, eight. Look at that. And they know what that means. I heard so. I heard Stu from here say that looks like a winner, but it was very fortunate there. Needed seven pins, and uh, he got eight, and that'll do it. What do you call that? Weebles wobble that pin hit, and he missed that wide. But I think. It I think that. Matters? I think. Yeah, I think that's more of a. Hey guys, I want to kind of let this rub in a little bit. You know, you guys can't beat. This is the spare was inconsequential at that time. They already had enough pins with 232. So it doesn't matter what's, what Anthony, if Anthony strikes here, the max uh, USA team can have is 230. So they're going to have to get in their camp. They might have to make some ball choice, ball changes and some lane, lane, uh, lane play changes. I'm sure the USA team will discuss what happened here and what transpired in the Baker match to see if they can make the necessary changes coming up in the singles matches. So Guy Kaminsky earlier, he said he thought this pattern might lead to high scoring. Uh, what are we seeing here? Well, I think we're seeing a combination of a couple of things. Players getting, they got to get comfortable with the lane. Uh, some Weber Cup nerves, obviously out of the get-go. And just, uh, it, it's more about them getting repetitions and shots on, on the pattern that's out there. So Europe takes, a, takes an early lead here with 232 to 218 and all the talk was about USA, but Team Europe says we are here to play. They've got a 1-0 lead, and they know how to handle it. Jesper Svensson is going to be up next. They're putting their lefty in first, aren't they? Yeah, I, I think I think the, the, the thought process with the Europeans was to try to get a little early lead here. 
We'll be back with the second match of the Weber Cup. Europe leads 1-0. All still to play for. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the Mandalay Bay, where Europe have made the perfect start to their Weber Cup campaign with victory in the opening match. Captain Dominic Barrett is now talking to Hannah Wilkes. Don, that's exactly the start you wanted coming out here, wasn't it? It was. It's a hard for all eight of us, really. Um, you know, we've been practicing this morning, but we come out and it's uh, you're a bit cold, obviously a bit nerves. It's a foreign environment that we only get once a year, so it takes a little bit of time to get settled in, but you know, get that point on the board early is very important. It certainly is. And how important is it? Because we talk about momentum so much in the Weber Cup. You got the first points on the board last year as well. Important to get the scores in early, isn't it? And then hopefully push on and capitalise on that. Yeah, exactly. You know, that was only one point. We need 18, but you've got to build a foundation, and that's what we're doing right now. Yes, we're just coming back out, going to look pretty good, and yeah, looking forward to the next one. We're one match into the 20th Weber Cup and we have some blue on the board after victory for Europe in the opening Baker match. It's singles matches from here on in, with the last game of the session being the fans' choice, where the public vote for the player from each side they want to see in the final matchup. But before that, Anthony Simonson faces Jesper Svensson. Premier matchup for the first singles match guy. And if you look back to 2018, really the Jesper Svensson versus Simonson matchup, that was kind of key. Simonson had the answer for Svensson there. How important is it for uh, Svensson to, to show that he's got what it takes to defeat Simonson here? They're always keys to every Weber Cup when you look back on it retrospectively to see uh, what the, the key changes were. And over that dominance of five years, Jesper and the last three particularly was the real difference if we watch our Simonson about lead us away. All the way at the left side, yeah, and it's the right place. Has he got this lane down? Well, you can see he made a ball change there, change to the RQ pull. Um, so, but you also can see the pressure. I mean, only on day one, game one, he only bowled a couple shots. Look at the relief on his face already to say, you know, hallelujah, I've got one in the pocket. But just on to finish that, Jesper really um, changed, because he bowls on the left-hand side, when USA were losing those five years, they were always trying to find an answer to him. They tried Parker Bond, they tried a few different guys, but Simonson absolutely eliminated his, you know, his threat last year, particularly because he's on the left-hand side. A terrific opening shot there from Jesper. There's the response he wanted. Strike, strike to open up this first singles match. We've got a high-quality game here. Yeah, absolutely. We alluded to it after the, the Baker game. It's so difficult when you, there's such a long wait between shots. So, you know, singles generally scores much higher than the Baker, the Baker game. Made the adjustment on the ball. Is it going to hold here? Oh, he is locked in. Yeah, he loves it. And confidence is always paper thin. You know, you can lose it so easily, but you can also get it so easily. You can see that ball change. You can see the smile, the demeanor, everything about him has changed after those two shots. Long-limbed lefty now. Can he answer? And it also sends a message to Jesper because he would have watched the Baker game and thought licking his chops for to play Anthony with those two strikes now. The pressure's firmly back on Jesper because Dom will be expecting him to win this game. Oh, and the seven pin, that was his bogeyman in 2018, wasn't it? That's exactly what it is. In this game, unfortunately, the level's so high, the small differences, you can see what actually happened there, he got stuck on the approach, and obviously just affected his release and didn't get the carry that he, he wanted. 
Trying to close out this spare. Straight forward, but the damage has been done. And an 11 point lead, 11 pin lead for USA. Yeah, advantage to Simonson. The adjustment, the ball change that Simonson made, would he have been doing that uh, with Chris Barnes' uh, input? Would it have been Chris's decision? I would think so. Um, you know, that's where that experience is so valuable that these young guys haven't been around like Chris has. I mean, I would assume that Chris has forgotten what these guys are doing. <laughs> oh, my. He is on pace for a zinger here, Simonson. Strike, strike, strike. They call that a turkey? Call it a turkey. What I love to see, I love to see the, bo the, you know, the body language. Look how pumped. I know it's so early, but they know how much this means to be out here. He knows his captain sent him out there first. He's got to do a job for the USA. The pressure doubled when they lost the Baker, and he really wants to, you know, you know, respond to the call from the captain. Yeah, and if you're Svensson, you cannot make it easy on him. Put the pressure back on. The only way to do that is strike. Ooh, got the lead at the tipple. That'll make him feel good. Yeah. Yes, yes, but looking very focused here. There's, look, he's not the most animated player. They call him the ass man. Um, he doesn't I mean, really get animated. I mean, he's still so young, Jesper Svensson, but he's been on around for quite a long time, hasn't he? I mean, him and Simonson, you're looking at the future of temp and bowling right here. What were they, 16 when they started out here? <laughs> they were very young, and they've achieved so much at such a young age. That's the incredible part about it. And this to go for four, a four-bagger. Absolutely perfect. Hot to trot is Anthony Simonson. Uh, and both these guys with that two-handed release as well. Is, is that is that considered stronger in the game these days? More oh, the, it, the youth? It's so much more powerful with your thumb out the ball. Their rev rates, you know, probably north of north of 600 for yes, but for sure, maybe at the 600 mark for for Simonson. He he's super talented and he can really do a lot of tricks with the ball. Yes, but is slightly more one-dimensional, one but if he starts striking, we've seen in the past Weber Cups, he can just keep going. High standard so far, and Svensson equals Simonson in this fourth frame. And that's a perfect response from Jesper, because with the scoring system, he's only one shot behind really, you know. Um, 30 pins for a strike I means if Simonson doesn't strike all the way it's only one shot behind him guy you predicted that this pattern would be high scoring it was starting it's starting to look like a barn burner yeah that's the thing also when you get lined up it could be so much easier but when you get lost like you said before we started this match that looks so good. And you can see the confidence rolling through his body now. I mean, he's gesturing to the crowd compared to the first frame when it was relief. Now you can see it's belief. Perfect 300 game. He's halfway there. How exciting would it be to see in the second uh, match of this Weber Cup to see a perfect 300 game. We're on. I hope you haven't given, given him the commentator's curse, but all Jesper can do is keep answering his strikes. His entry into the pocket hasn't looked as good as Simonson. He's using a urethane ball here, not as strong as, as the reactive. Oh, he likes it so far. Easy peasy, says Svensson. I don't think anything can get to this guy. He is so <laughs> calm under pressure, it's phenomenal. Welcome back to the Weber Cup here at the Mandalay Bay. The Europeans claimed the opening point in the Baker match. In the second, Anthony Simonson of the US has a slim advantage over Sweden's Jesper Svensson. It's one point for the win, with 18 the overall total needed. And your commentators are Guy Kaminsky and Jesse May. Oh, That's simply phenomenal bowling. 
You feel like both teams say, just let these guys keep going all day long. And I think for the, for the average bowler out there to notice, to see how quickly the guys make the changes. They, they don't delay. When they, when they realize something's wrong, the change is instant. He wasn't necessarily sure it'd be the right change, but he still made the change, so credit to him. Well, over to Jesper again. Can he answer with another strike? Six frames, 11 strikes between the two of them. Yeah, and I mean, can you imagine 289 right now, Max for uh, for Jesper Svensson, and it's not even looking like a winning score. Yeah, but as we, we mentioned, there's only one shot different, a bad break, a bad shot, anything can happen. And Jesper's doing the right thing. Is he just, do you keep waiting and knocking on the door and see if somebody answers? Is Simonson feeling the pressure? He's got very little separation so far, despite the perfect start. Oh. Oh, wow. What do they call that? Is that the impossible spare? That's the impossible spare, the 7 10 split. That's brutal. I mean, was he unlucky or is it a look? He, get, he like gets a, bad bad injury. a bit far to the right, and the entry angle in, into the pocket is a bit behind the head pin. So what it does, it knocks knocks the pin in front of the of those. Do you see the pin there rolling in front? That's a problem when you're coming behind the head pin. But is there I mean, even a we, shot? Oh. Nah, normally we would expect that to get a nine, to get a, the seven ten split. But that's what I'm saying. You've got to just keep going. But also in bowling, there's a major momentum shift when you trying to keep up versus trying to make a shot to go into, go into the lead. So let's see if, you know, if uh, Jesper can take us over the line here. This is the most important shot of the Weber Cup for Jesper Svensson so far. He can steal the match nearly, or steal the lead anyway. If he strikes here, it'll be a dagger for Team Europe. What happened? So, so what generally happens with that is that when, you, when you're trying to chase, you're kind of free swinging it. And when you really need an important strike, you want it too much. And you're actually just over, it's called overthrowing it a little bit. He gets it too far down the lane and the ball can't, can't recover. It also gets him behind the head pin. But a major mistake. That's the mental game. How tough is this spare? Where does he need to hit to close this? I mean, a, another particularly difficult one. But you either got to bounce it or hit them square and hope one splits up. And can hit the seven pin, but another near impossible. Not even close, and that right. gifts the lead back to Team USA. Uh, no one more relieved than Simonson, but coming down to the last three frames, it's still a one-shot match. It's still only 11 pins in it. But can Simonson put that out of his mind and refocus for this next frame? Any adjustment he needs to make after the last frame? Yeah, I don't really think so. I think he'd be pretty happy with it. I mean, could have been a nine. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't get it as wide as the previous, the previous frame. Normal service resumed. USA crowd very happy. They want to see this match go level. We see he had the ball in the break point. That ball doesn't get as far to the right before it started to hook. For Svensson, did he let one get away? All he can do is carry on, try and strike out here. Yeah, back to where he was, back to chasing. There's the power. There's the... Oh. Is that an unusual leave? No, a, that was a perfect shot. That's just really unlucky. Unfortunately, those breaks happen. And then over the week, or over this week of bowling, those will level out, you know, I mean. Variance in the game of bowling. Just missed by a hair. Uh, he definitely didn't want that one back when he let it go. It was perfect. He's shaking his head there. Still ruining that bad break. Closed out nicely. And a little bit of breathing room for Simonson. Does yep. a strike take him to, to the victory here? 
I mean, pretty pretty much over the line, not completely and mathematically, but um, I yeah, think strike and eight pins, right? Yeah, so the strike will pretty much lock it up. This is where the killers put the hammer down. Can he close it out? Absolutely perfect. I mean, what a game he's bowled you. I mean, on another day, this could be nine trucks in a row and with a bit of, bit of a good break. I'll, I'll tell you, this Weber Cup is going to be level 1-1, one, one, but after seeing Simonson, he has probably put the fear into the hearts of Team Europe. He's going to be tough. I can tell you, it's not, what, it's not what Dom wanted to see. We saw a lot of this last year, and he really was a difference. He was phenomenal. Oh, Ooh. got the late Seven hit. Seven messenger, yeah, great shot. <laughs> Unfortunately, too little, too late now. Max of 257 for Svensson of Europe. All we need now is nine pins for Simonson to lock this game up. First point for USA potentially coming up, yeah. Strike would take him to 279, which is a healthy score. Looks good. It looks great. It looks like a point for USA. What an incredible game. What an incredible ball change. And look at that smile on the captain of Team USA. Chris Barnes put Anthony Simonson first, and it's good he did. Weber Cup level 1-1. Jesper Svensson's going to just finish up here. But uh, they've got some answers now. They've got some, they got some changes to make Team Europe. Yeah, I mean, what we really want to see is everyone getting lined up and both of them being on top of their game. And with one game matches, it doesn't take long for momentum to shift and change. But uh... Stu Williams saying, Jesper Svensson, don't worry, you'll get him back. He actually bowled a pretty good game, Jesper, right? I mean, he was just in the face of a thunder crusher. Yeah, he's still going to pick up his spear. He has his last shot in the frame. But um, yeah, he bowled a great game. And at this level, you know, it's the small things. And he'll look back at that frame with a seven where he just perhaps overthrew it. Got too excited, adrenaline started pumping. Anthony Simonson taking that. Well, Anthony, you resumed your rivalry with Jesper after last year, where I think it ended up 3-1 to you with another commanding win. I've got to ask, though, what happened in the seventh frame? So close to a perfect game. Uh, you know, I missed just a little bit inside of target and ball. Got a little too far down the lane for it, decided to hook. So uh, I didn't think it was going to split, but I was OK with it not striking. Uh, just leave it behind me and moved on. We saw quite a big change in your demeanor on that lane from the Baker match. Have you sort of warmed up and settled into this now? Yeah, uh, you know, I'd, I was pretty comfortable throughout practice the last two days. And then once we started, I had a little bit of approach problems. Uh, so I tinkered with that a little bit. And getting those uh, first few frames under me and getting the first strike uh, to start this game really helped settle me in. Coming up next time, it's the singles debut of Jacob Butterf as he takes on the winner of seven Weber Cups, Team Europe's captain, Dominic Barrett. And in match four, the US captain, Chris Barnes, faces the European stalwart, Stuart Williams, as Weber Cup 20 continues from the Mandalay Bay here in Las Vegas.